please remain standing as the rappella let us pray mudimu tatwa rona re ya lebo hatsa tsinla ka jeno ka monyetla wa ho thank you lord for the things so di etsa mama pilonga rona because we know that without you we are nothing without you there's no hope without you life is not what it ought to be thank you for your grace in loving us thank you for your grace in receiving us thank you for your grace in working in our lives thank you for your grace in the powerful and mighty things that you do in us and through us we're grateful to see more churches started we're grateful to see more young people come into ministry we're grateful to see the kingdom of god expand its footprint and more people coming to know you as savior and lord I pray Lord as I speak your word today that I may speak as of the oracles of God. I pray for the people here Lord each and every one of us that you anoint our ears to hear that will hear with the ear of the spirit pour upon us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of your calling that we may know what is the glory of your inheritance in the saints that we may know what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us what who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you demonstrated in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion may we be the vessels that will be filled with your power filled with your glory work among us spirit of the living god we know you are here among us and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty have freedom to do what only you can do as we give you honor and glory in Jesus name and everybody said amen. amen and amen hallelujah well before we love our father give your neighbor a high five tell them god is a good god look at amen said thank you so much let me know hallelujah praise the lord well rega lo mafatsi eh amuruti le me e re ke le bo go mela gane ka go memiwa and may I congratulate you and the good work that you are doing you know and that you are a young church that is advancing quite fast rona it took us about 19 years to grow our own building and rona you are much younger than that in terms of how long the ministry has been congratulations to you believers bible church for getting your own place and secondly Yeah, just to have a service and have this kind of services and I'm so glad that uh, this one is the last one and that I'm the second guest speaker Chineke <laughs> so that I'm, I'm quite happy to be here and uh, you know sometimes when when you are leading a church you just don't have an idea of how God is going to raise people among the people in the church and uh, uh, I I thank God for you guys Brut I thank God for you how God has raised you as a young man and now you lead the ministry i'm thankful to be here really so when he, when he invited me pela he lobbied me this man <laughs> for quite a while <laughs> and i finally said yes <laughs> amen but i really appreciate obamon i was and i'm glad to see you all here this afternoon yeah. i'm really excited really really and i really congratulate you <laughs> amen amen i'm here one year about to barona muruti zwane who's leading one of those 60 something churches <laughs> He's in, he's in Orange Fab. Can you stand with me? Just give me a hand. Yeah. The Lord. He's been in our church now how long? Yo. Yo. <laughs> I count how, how many 20 how many? 25. 25 years he's been in our church. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bless you. And then I have Tatem Konto who's a businessman and he travels with me all the time. Tatem Konto, can you stand? Good man this one. And how many years? 22 years he's been in our church. Yeah. So, Bazarana, thank you so much. This morning we released almost 200 pastors to go and start churches so the dream of a thousand churches is just around the corner i was so happy because some of them came to our church when they were one was seven years old another one was 14 years old and they were all young people and uh, just the grace to see god keep them and god grow them so i'm just saying that to you to say that ministry is for us to stay in for the long haul you must you must decide to stay for the long haul and uh, don't go into any gimmicks yes, sir. Like an amodin <laughs> just preach god's word believe god's word Amen. live right Amen. love jesus with all your heart Amen. 
God will get you there. Amen. I see there's lots of young people in this church and I just love it when I come to a church like this. And I just pray that the grace that God has shown some of us, God will show it to you. Amen. I became a Christian uh, many years ago. 5th of August 1978. That is a long, 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 long time ago. That's when I became a Christian. Yeah, I some of so I don't mind telling you. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit the following year at the age of 18. And that was on the 4th of July 1979 when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And God called me into ministry the 8th of July 1979. And I went to Bible school the following year. I was 20 years old when I went to Bible school. And when I became pastor of this church I'm leading now, I was 22 years old. That was on the 4th of September, 1983. So I still remember all the dates. And uh, by the grace of God, I've led the church now for almost 30, 30, almost 39, almost 40 years. Next year will be 40 years leading the church. And I'm, I'm saying that because I want to try and encourage you. You know, when I, when I became a Christian, many people said this thing won't last. You are 17 years old. You are wasting your time. And I don't know how to do many of you are doing Rockville. Yeah, Rockville is a black guy. Yeah, it's the cleverest guy. You may say, it's the cleverest guy. It's not a lacune, it's the cleverest guy. Yeah, yeah. So, so the cleverest from Rockville, they told me straight that this is not going to work. They told me you're not gonna last, you know. Seventeen years old, you don't got joko eka now the money and so it was worse when I went into ministry in 1980 Kiyako Bible School. I mean, even my own close family, not my parents, but extended family, would come to my parents and say, "Don't you want to have him try to go do something else? How can I get a move routine and live money and so?" And I'm glad, Bazarana, that uh, ah. this year I said I celebrated my 61st birthday. Wow. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a no, I'm an official Sasa person. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, God's vision grows all the time. And God is able to keep you and strengthen you. You live for God, you put God first. The vision doesn't become smaller. It becomes stronger. I'm more crazy now at my age. Hello, Kuti, how are you? The vision is I'm more crazy now than I was when I was 17 years old. And I see the same thing happening to you. Amen. I want to talk about the integrity of God's word. The integrity of God's word. I know the theme that uh, Muruti Abraham gave me was built to last. And it's talking about the word of God. The integrity of the word of God or the value of the word of God. The word of God is a vital part of our spiritual lives and our spiritual growth. You'll never grow in your faith without God's word. There are many Christians who don't have a relationship with the Bible. They don't read it. They don't study it. They don't think on it. They don't even know. You know, in our time as a, as a young Christian, they, they used to uh, uh, get us to memorize the Bible. I'm, I'm surprised how many people don't know the Bible by heart like that. The prayer that I prayed just now is from Ephesians chapter 1, yes. from verse 14 to verse 21. Yes. And, and I prayed that prayer for many years. Wow. And if you're going to be sustained by, by God, you have to have a relationship with the Word of God. So I want to show you in this session why it's so important, number one, to study the Word of God, and number two, to be doers of the Word of God. Of God, all right. When you look at our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is the pattern of our lives, Amen. right? If you really want to know how to do stuff, look at the pattern of Jesus Christ. I'm amazed today that when even when people run churches, you know, they don't copy what Jesus did. You know, that's and totsetting. But if you look at Jesus, he was the pattern in his ministry during his earthly ministry. He spent a lot of time teaching and preaching. And the Bible tells us, when you read the sequence of it, it says he was teaching, preaching, and healing. Yeah. Teaching, preaching, and healing. Say it with me. Teaching, preaching, and healing. Let's go. It's, it's what? Teaching, preaching, and healing. Now, there's a law in the Bible that in theological terms, we call it the law of first mention. The law of first mention is anywhere where something is mentioned for the first time, there's always a deliberate effort by God to present it in a specific way 
So when something is mentioned for the first time, you want to study it, you want to look deeper into it, because that becomes the pattern after which everything must follow. So when you read the ministry of Christ, you note this. Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching, preaching, and healing. This is not what we see these days in churches. People want to heal, 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 prophesy, 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 and do all kinds of things. And, and that becomes the pattern that people follow. And that becomes what people want. But the, the healings of Jesus followed the teaching, the preaching, then the healing. When he went into the temple, he would teach. When he was outside with the multitude in the outside spaces, he would preach. Why? Because preaching belongs to the non-churched people, teaching belongs to the church people. And that's a pattern. So Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing. In Matthew 4, 37, it says Jesus was teaching and preaching in Galilee. In Matthew 9, 35, it says he went about all cities teaching. In John 7, 14, it says, and Jesus went into the temple and he taught. So the ministry of Jesus, he spent a lot of time. And this is what I tell people. You know, Vazalana, like I say, I'm not saying it to boast. I'm just saying it to encourage you. 40 years I've been a pastor of Grace Bible Church. And there's people who have been in our church for that long. 40 years. I mean, many people have been in our church 40 years, 39 years, whatever. Okay, Baba Nkwana never can. You know, we've got a nine-year-old who gave her life to the Lord last week. This nine-year-old girl, you know, gave her life to the Lord. Shem, give me 2,000 an hour. Here's that here, you know, so the you know. But let me tell you something. As I've looked at the people, there are many people in our church when they came there, right? As a pastor, I counseled many of them. They had all kinds of issues, problems, marital problems. Some of them had background problems, daddy issues. And some of them, they were very poor people. I mean, extremely poor. Very, very poor. And I've watched over these years how the word of God is able to change somebody's yeah. life. Yeah. Without hujaha, yeah. without any spectacular anything, no oil, no snake, no grass, just the word of the Lord. Yeah. Huh? No, no funny stuff. No funny stuff. Just the word of God. And I can confidently tell people, the word of God works. Yeah. If you take it seriously, it will work. It might not work today. It might work, not work tomorrow. But like Rachel Kosovo too. One day is one day. Yeah. When you look at your life, you realize you are no longer at the same place. When I became pastor of Grace Bible Church, we had 35 people in the classroom. Wow. Isaacson Higher Primary School, 35 people, wow. 22 years old, you know, we didn't have money, I mean, I mean for, the, for the first three years, Kokira King, you know, you know what I'm saying? And then when they started giving me a salary, I was a full-time pastor, I remember my salary, I earned what, uh, 300 runs, that's all. I mean, even those years, 300 rands was not a lot of money. Thank God I was single. <laughs> Jesus. So in the care of the kilo jadi jota ko high kilo bala ko high. Oh, Jesus. You know. And but but that's all. That's all. You know. But then the church started growing. We outgrew the building. Then we went to another building. Home. Uh, we went to Church of the Holy Ghost. We grew to about 400 people there. Then we left Church of the Holy Ghost and moved to Tlengi where we grew to 600 people. Then we moved from Tlengi, we moved to a Homemakers Festival Ground. We grew to a thousand people, to 1,005. We moved from there and then we were where we are now. We've grown to almost 40,000 people. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah. And Mamela yeah. Ambasalana, no gimmick. Yeah. No gimmick. Yeah. No gimmick. Yeah. Just the preaching of the word. That's the only thing that sustains people. That's the only thing that will keep you. That's the only thing that will give sure results. No gimmicks. Can I hear a good amen in the house? Hallelujah. When you look at the ministry of the early church, the apostles spent a lot of time teaching and preaching the word to the disciples. In Acts chapter 2, Verse 41 and 42, it says, And they gladly received the word, and watch, and continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. There has to be a commitment to believe God's word, to live by God's word, to practice God's word. Because God's word won't work for you, how about alone? So most people say God's word don't, doesn't work, and I say, well, la, la, la. you must ask some of us. 
You must have God's word works. And God's word changes lives. I mean, there's a guy in our church. In a little old this guy. Hey, hey, they're not wrong. Hey, you know, not about I'm wrong. How many of you know those people? How many of you are sitting next to one of those people right now? I mean, this guy. There's a place in Soweto, every time White City. You know, right now things have changed a lot, but back then in our time, White City, Jabavu, you never used to go there. I mean, it really black, you have very rough people. And this guy called White City, he was known. He was a bad guy. He used to kill people. He used to have a gangster. Everyone was afraid of him. Came to our church, uh, I think it nearly about 90 something, and he got born again. Changed by God. I mean, totally changed by God. So one day, there was a funeral in the area of White City. So now I can't I don't know everybody in our church. And I don't even know. I'm like, I can't see where I'm So I asked this guy to accompany me to White City. So we went to this house. And I noticed as I got to the house, I see all these guys, rough guys. I mean, out it's all about when you look at them. <laughs> and all of them were looking at me, their eyes following me wherever I went. And I'm wondering, why? So I went into the house, got see this. I went out, got Samaya, and they're looking at me, following me, and then I left. So, then later on I asked from some of our members, Rumar, why never want you be so bad? I know we overheard them talking. But hey, the food is so wrong, man. Because I was with this guy. And this guy was on, as I speak now, yeah, two weeks ago, ne? two weeks ago, we assigned him to lead one of our churches. Yeah. Only the gospel can take a murderer and make a preacher out of them. God's word. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 31, it says, And the apostles spoke the word of God with boldness. So, what is the value of God's word in our lives? I've got many points here. Number one, it is God's primary way of speaking to us. Yeah. All right? It's God's. Now, many people say, no, no, so clear. I've never heard the voice of God. You've got it there in your lap. Yeah. You've got it there in your Bible or your iPad or your iPhone. Okay? The Word of God, that is the first part of call. That's the first place. If you hear any voice that tells you to do anything that contradicts the Bible, you don't even need to pray about what it's saying. Just look at it and say, Puma Satan. Get the behind me Satan because God will never tell you to do anything that contradicts his word. Right? The word of God, it is the first place. Whatever it says, that's God speaking to you. Do you have your Bibles? I know some of you have your e-Bibles. I see she's got her cell phone. Mara we pachamise, my dear Utlane. We pachamise is the word of God for you. Okay, just raise your Bibles and your e-Bibles. You can raise it too and say, say with me, this is the word of God. I believe what it says. I receive it in my life. This is God speaking to me. I'll receive it. I'll believe it. I'll act on it. In Jesus' name. Give yourselves a big hand if you believe that. Amen. 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 So, it is God's primary way of speaking to us. Uh, sure, I didn't bring my other... Have you got my, oh, my other phone? Okay, but I'll have to quote this one. I thought I'll read it. 2 Timothy 4.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration. And it says, and it's profitable for rebuke, it's profitable for instruction in righteousness that the servant of the Lord will be complete. So God's word is profitable. Yes, you know, God's word is profitable. I like, well, I think I'll read it later, but let me quote it now. Proverbs 4, one of my most interesting chapters in the Bible. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart out of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of their heart. For uh, they are life to those who find them. Yes. And they are health to all their flesh. God's word is able to impart life and wisdom to you. It becomes a direction for life. I would advise all of you young people to read the book of Proverbs. All right? Read the, and Skelan Kang King James Bible with thee thou. Thou doest well. <laughs> no, just, just find a, an easy Bible to read, like the NIV 
or the NLT. I see the young people like the NLT. And today they read the, the passion. You know, we older guys, we say the passion. The young ones say the passion. <laughs> so you go and get the passion and read the passion translation and, and read it. You know, let me explain to you what the book of Proverbs was. You see, just like in our culture, you know, the thing I like about the Bible is that the culture in it is so similar to our African culture. So many things there. Most people don't know that. They don't know that. They don't know that. And in the Jewish culture, they believe very much in the wisdom of elderly people. They believe that. So in the book of Proverbs, it's actually an older man writing to his son, right? And giving him advice. Listen to me, young people. I know we may not be trendy. We may not be trending. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, I know, I know. I may not, I'm not able to dance like you. I might not know your lingo. But let me tell you, I've lived longer than you. Okay? And there's a, there's a few things that older people know that you don't know. And if you're wise, you will listen to their advice. You know, my, my late father, Unasebe Ali Wan, and I come from a big family. We, we, we were seven at home. Five children, my mom and dad. And my father worked early one. My mother, of course, now had uh, some things on the side. They had decided mama will be the house manager. Again, I'm trying to be politically correct. I say, I say, I say housewife, yeah, like a house manager. She make. Yeah, yeah. So my mother was a house manager and my dad worked. He was a school teacher. So he didn't earn such a lot of money. But he, he took care of us. I don't remember one day. I don't remember. Even one day. And my father took care of us. And I mean, you know, when you are a child and when you are young, you think it's easy. Ne? Yeah. yeah, you think it's easy. Yeah, yeah. And then I got married. You know, I, I got married in 1988. Yeah. And in 1990, our firstborn son came. <laughs> hey, just the hospital fees in general. Those days when money was money, 10,000 rands more, more for us. Hey! I knew one fella already. <laughs> hey, already fella says he bankrupt. Imagine when I have two, <laughs> or three, <laughs> or five. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ask myself, how did my father cope? How did he manage to take care of five of us? We were clothed, we were fed. When I went to Bible school, First year, my dad paid for my schooling. How did he cope? I mean, even as a married guy, my father would still buy me a gift. Hey, how did he cope? And then I realized, there's got to be something the brother knows. Yeah. Yeah, there's got to be something the man knows about handling money. Yeah. You see, see, when you're still younger, you think you know more than him. So the book of Proverbs, it's an older man. Why? The advice of an older person is, is valuable because we've made mistakes in our youth. Yes. There are certain things, if we were to start again, we wouldn't do them. Yeah. We wouldn't do them because there are certain things that have left a dent in our lives yeah. that even if it's in the sea, where the dent is still there. Yes. All right. Even years later, the damage is there. There are certain things we've had to, we have to live with and accept. If we knew better, if we only said no, if we only walked away, if we only ran, if we didn't just relate with that crowd, if we, if we just turned our back, we would be in a better place. Yes. And so he writes the book of Proverbs to this young man and he gives him advice. Yes. And he talks about everything. So go and read it. I grew up reading the book of Proverbs. I still read it today. And I can tell you something. It spared me from a lot of tragedy. Yes. Because you see, you see the, I've got lots of friends who used to say, oh, I went to a party, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever, whatever. So today, it's a different story. Yeah, today, and I, I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying, today. you will think that I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. And in my case, I'm married. I have a lovely wife, I've got children, I've got houses, I've got cars, and I've got that, and I'm preaching the gospel, and I'm happy. No, no, I can have any problem. I'm happy. I know. Like it so hard. I can have a I can I can No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have to worry that the hawks will come and take my stuff because but hey, can I hear the name in the house? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I tell them, 
I tell them, Pariel, and eh? Can they tell you 20 years later? Why? Because the word of God will make you wise. The word of God will take you further. The word of God is profitable for you. Can I hear a good amen in the house? Can I hear a hallelujah in the house? You must read the book of Proverbs. So, what, number one, God's, the word of God is God's primary way of speaking to us. And the word of God is profitable. Familiarize yourself with the word. Build a discipline of reading the Bible every day. Now, there are certain things how you are going to frustrate you. You are going to feed the way. Don't worry. No, I'm telling you. Because I'll show you later. I'll show you later. You see, how do I say this? You see, your spirit is like the cloud. I can really start out in the cloud in these days. We learn the size of the cloud. They start out in the cloud. So, so, as Obala, you see, the, the word of God gets downloaded in your cloud called the spirit. Right? Even if you don't understand all of it, it gets downloaded there. So this is what the Holy Spirit does. There comes a time when you are in a situation that needs intervention and it needs scriptures. And what the Holy Spirit does, he retrieves specific information that, is, that has to do with your specific situation. Jesus says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will remind you. Mara, you can't be reminded of what you didn't know in the first place. You can't retrieve what you never stored in the hard drive in the first place. So some of it, I've read a lot of things in the Bible. That's things I've read in the Bible, and only 10 years later did it come in handy. But here's what I realized. Your spirit doesn't forget, because your spirit is internal. And what I even like more is that the word of God does not rot. It doesn't die. It's incorruptible seed. Once it's downloaded, there's no virus that can delete it. There's nothing that can remove it, because it's downloaded on the hard drive of your core, on the cloud called your spirit. And God's word will be of benefit to you. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen from some of you who have not been saying anything? Amen. Number two. Number two. The word of God is food for our spirits. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is what most people don't know. You see, you are not just a body and a mind. Now, now. You are a spirit being. Genesis chapter 2, when you read, and God made man in his own image. In the image of God made he him. Male and female made he them. And God took the dust from the ground and formed the body of man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, it says. That's Genesis 1.26. And man became a living soul. So, you, 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 you know, the one, 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 one translation says, it says the sustenance of the man's body comes from his soul. There's this part of you called the spirit. It's what they call the inanimate nature of man. This is the unseen part of you. Now, I know the Bishop Moses. I'm really a Bishop Moses. You are looking at the house in which I live. Because I'm not a body. I'm a spirit being. That's the part of you that makes you eternal. That's the part of you, actually the word die in the Bible. The word death doesn't mean The word death literally means separation. So when somebody has died is when the spirit separates from the body. So we say they have died, right? So when a point of death comes, our spirit separates from the body. And the spirit that comes from God, if you receive Christ as Savior and Lord and you live the way that's correct, go to heaven. If you didn't, you go to another place called hell, right? And you're going to give account for your spirit. Now, so watch this. Here we are. We are living here on earth. The only reason we are down here on earth is because we are inside the body, right? This body is our earth suit. This, this body is what gives us the right and the permission to live here on earth. Once you are not in this body, you have to go into the world of the departed. Okay, you won't, all right? So, once we live in this body on this earth, this body makes me come into contact with this world because this world, you can only be accessed through the five senses. Feel, taste, smell, see, and touch right so that's how we relate with the natural world but the spiritual world is different yeah. so you cannot access god through your physical senses yeah. 
You can see him, you can taste him, you can smell him, you can hear him with these natural ears. You cannot. But God is. And the only way to be able to contact God, it is through your spirit. Because it is, it is the range where God is. It is the, what do you call it? It is the dimension where God is. You see? You see? You know there's wavelengths. You know even with these devices. You, you know like what they're using here. This, uh, is, are we alright? Mm. Or oh, you want to move it? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Amen. And Diabulel. <laughs> thank you. No, it's going to be a yeah, thank you so much. You know, I'm using a cordless mic here. Ne? This cordless mic has got a certain range in terms of waves. They have to tune it to a specific wavelength. Yeah. Right? So they tune it to the wavelength. Right? Now, you can take another mic. And if that mic is not tuned to the proper wavelength, it can't be picked up by that receiver. Yeah. Now watch. It doesn't mean the receiver is not transmitting or the receiver is broken. Yeah. But they're not in the same wavelength. Yeah. You understand me? You can't access God through your physical body. So you're not on the same wavelength. The wavelength of accessing God is your spirit. And most people know very little about their spirit. And Jesus tells them, he says, for your life to be sustained. I like it in the Amplified Bible. He says, man shall not live by, be sustained and upheld and held together by the food that he eats alone. Yeah. The food that we eat is good for our body, but it can't feed our spirits. Right. That's why people can have everything that life can give and still feel empty and morose on the inside. Yes. That's why people can buy the most expensive bed and never be able to sleep at night. Yes. They can build the most expensive house, but it can never have a homely atmosphere in it. Yes. Because there is more to life than just the physical things. Yes. There's this thing called the spirit of a man. Yeah. And the spirit of a man is what the Bible is about. The spirit of a man is what we do. The spirit of a man is what we're trying to service in church. We are here to try and get the spirit of a person to grow. And the Bible says the spirit of a man will overcome adversity. In other words, there's a strength that comes from your spirit that even if your body is surrounded by adversity, you can be able to overcome that adversity because of your spirit. And most people know very little about their spirit and they don't understand how the word of God is food for their spirit. Now watch this, watch this. In a natural sense, if you don't eat well, right, you starve. You lose weight, you starve, and finally you go into starvation. Ovalo kwashi. Kwashi your cough. Ah. You will say kwashi, you will say kwashi. You will But can I tell you the sad part? There are so many people who are in a permanent state, sakwashi spiritually. Because they never feed their spirits. On the word of God. As a result, they are weak spiritually. So most people can't stand against the powers of darkness. And the problem is that it is the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The condition of your spirit can sustain your weak body. When your spirit is strong, even if you are inside difficult circumstances, you will be sustained. Mamela, Mamela. You can be in an informal settlement and you don't have enough food and you don't have a car and you don't have the latest cell phone and still be strong and satisfied in an informal settlement more than a guy who is in an estate in a gated community whose spirit is not fed by the world. And most people have not understood that. But it's even better to have your spirit fed and live in an estate as well. Oh. Uh, even better to have it all. But most people haven't understood. And Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone. And many people, you know, we look after these houses. Eh? We extend them. We paint them. We twist them. We Botox them. But we don't take the same care of our spirits. People don't read the Bible. They don't go to church. They don't buy things that feed their spirits. They, they just revolve around physical things. You see, I've been pastor long enough and I've met all kinds of people. Like what Marutu was saying. By God's grace, I've met people all ranges. All countries. Yeah? 
siyafana songe. Yeah. Agona different. <laughs> ya meluku. <laughs> siyafana songe. Doesn't matter black, white, yellow. Doesn't matter if you are in Korea, in America, Australia, Canada. Doesn't matter if you are in Ghana, Nigeria, Mali. Doesn't make a difference if you are in South Africa. Doesn't matter if you are in an informal settlement in an estate. Doesn't matter if you are the president of the first world country or you are a, a, a principal at your school. We are spirit beings. And when the spirits of people has not been fed, I wish some of you knew how much the rate of suicide is high in the so-called first world countries. Because many of the first world countries, they were where we are now, where many people were longing for God and they were searching for God. Point in case is Scotland. My wife and I, we traveled to Scotland a few years ago. Scotland, these are the people who produce some of the greatest preachers you'll ever find. It was a nation that went after God because as human beings, we had a struggle, we ran to God. Mara, wrong, Kaori. Once our struggles are gone, yeah. 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 That's what God told the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy 8, 18. He says, when you build your houses, when you have food on the table, he says, don't forget me. Because our problem is that once you're really right, you're really sharp. And we think that things that are directly can be the be all and end all. So in Scotland, as we traveled around, I cried because you see buildings, it's a church building. You go to it, you think it's a church, it's been sold, now it's a tavern. Or now it's a, it's a, it's a place where people buy like what they get a flat. Or it's a supermarket. A nation that once had churches everywhere. But as God prospered them, because see, when you serve God, God will prosper you. Yeah. <laughs> Our human tendency is that must is right. Yeah. We don't go to church anymore. We don't pray anymore. We philosophize about God. We start questioning the very thing that brought us where we are. We start asking questions about God when our own mothers and fathers were sustained by God and we are where we are because of their efforts. And they prayed over us. I've seen it at our church. I remember this lady. She had two boys. You know, the husband had left her, mistreated her. This lady, the only hope she had was church. Yeah. She'd come there with the boys. Be there, you see these kids, just about the appearing. Ma, ah, goodness. And I watched God raise this woman and raise these children. Goodness. And these boys became, I mean, seriously educated. Thank God they didn't walk away. Amen. But many people, when they get to a certain point, they start philosophizing about it. They start questioning. And they forget. Men shall not live by bread alone. Don't live by bread alone. You've got to read the word, feed your spirit. Just like they tell you, eat three times a day or twice a day, they even tell you what to eat. Right? So even spiritually, don't feed yourself on, 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 on spiritual fast food because there's, there's things that everyone these days get the fast food. They'll affect your health. They are not, they are not, they are not proper stuff. They are not proper. Back in the day, Tomo. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. When I was running about Kula, Momo, Momo, I'm going to walk Kula. I'm going to run about to a man around. I'm going to walk Kula. Why is it shame? Walk Kula. I'm going to. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to run about to a Kula. Net so, car ujilen tote wrong. Okay. All right. All right. Make sure spiritually you eat. The first place to start, Ipale Bible. Yeah. Don't believe everything they tell you. Read the Bible. Check if what they're saying is so. Because some of them, but Jesus are diverse. But cover the scripture because what like Jesus some. How why let what say so yeah no. Number three. Number three. Number three. God's word provides guidance for us to walk in. Psalms 119 says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is what I tell people. If the Bible says don't do it, don't do it. Amen. There's no need to philosophize about it. Don't do it. Don't 
do it. See, I was a very young pastor. I was 17 years old. And I see, I'm looking at some of these guys. I was, I was very young. I was 17. I was 22 years. And I was a single pastor yeah. for many years. Sure. And the church was growing. <laughs> In the church, it was lit. <laughs> we were happening. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the question was, as a single pastor, how am I going to live? I can't remember pulpit thing that I can scan about my sister. I remember one pastor who came to our church. This pastor, after after the service, he comes to me and says, Oh, concentrate, I am. I know some of you don't want to laugh because you're in church. Come on now. I said, What do you mean to concentrate, I am? No, man, man. Why you should work on care? So I acted like I like a soccer. Next time, what is it? Because he had come on the pulpit. I saw the So I said to him, yeah, one of us. But it depends on your focus. Yeah. I mean, we've got to acknowledge people are beautiful. I mean, really. Never say no. <laughs> and there's no sin in acknowledging what you never say no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for me, Baba said, Bonk. But my focus was to preach. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Was to preach. You see, it, it, it's up to you how you want your life to be. Amen. God's word provides guidance. And the word of God tells us how to. Behave among sisters, Aulumurundi. Paul talked to Timothy. Yes. He said that the, the women handle as your sisters. Yeah. Yeah. My mother would not have a I don't know what that means, but she used to say that. But you see, you take God's word in terms of purity, moral living, yes. your thought life. Your decisions yes. in terms of honor and respect. There's lots of young people who disrespect their parents. Oh, yeah. I can't say lots of young people today who, on face value, their life should be further than what it is. Yeah. And they can't figure out why they're going in circles. Wow. They can't. They've got the education, they've got the money, they've got the skill, they've got the tender. Mm. Why didn't you serve Eric? Mm. They can't figure out. And now when I talk to them, in five minutes I know where their problem is. They're very disrespectful towards their parents. Amen. And I say, yeah, they must end my respect. What do you mean, end your respect? <laughs> Listen, God said, honor your father and mother. It's in Deuteronomy 6. It's in the book of Ephesians. It says, honor your father and mother so that it should be well with you and that your days on earth should be well days. Yes. Honor is a choice you make. Yes. Many of you, the user of Beyonce is the screen savers alone. You don't know her from a bar of soap. And I could see it. Come on now. Don't laugh. Don't, 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 You got her on the phone because, you know, she is your, she's your, she's, she's my idol. And I saw Kopanil and I could see it. Mara, you so revere her. If I got her more, hey, some of you, you even forget her character. Oh, yes. Why? Because you have chosen to treat her in a certain way. You don't know her moral life. You don't know her spiritual life. You don't know if the right. So honor is a choice you make. It's got nothing to do with how the person lives. Some of you, you don't honor your parents. You think they're stupid. You think they're fools. And God's word tells us to honor. But you don't know. And I see the young generation today, very dishonoring generation. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell them, so I said, look, if God keeps you long enough, because many of them die young. Yeah. And they can't figure out why they're going And I say, if you live long enough, 20 years from now, if what I'm saying is not true, I honored my parents till the last day on earth. There are things I would never say to my parents. There's a line I would never cross. Even after I was married, and I was, you see, when I ran the church, my parents were members in my church. 
My father used to interpret for me. There are members in my church, but there's a place I would never, there's a way I would never talk to my father. Never. Till the last day on earth. Yeah. I'd, I'd go to my father and talk to him. And after he passed on, you know, I had learned now to honor, my, to honor even more. And I'd go to my mom, Komu Fachel. I used to take a um, tithe to my mother. Not, not a tithe, a gift. We had a special gift. And I would kneel down and say, Mama, kukupa yes. Listen to me. When an elderly person says, Mudimu akutlokhonono fats and wanaka. Do you know what that means? Some of you, you see us ministry ritual, let's say pay the rent, you think it's our effort? You think it's our wisdom? You think it's our strength? Ah, we are carried by the blessings of our parents. Because that's what the word of God taught us. Honoring your pastors. Honoring leaders. Being loyal, being faithful. God's word is a light. It's a lamp. If you follow it, God will protect you. God will protect you. Yeah. There's things my parents my When I was when I was very young, before Pulusa now, Nyaslambulula man when I was 11, when I was now 14 years old, 15 years old, I, I tried to smoke. I tried to smoke. And my, my friend and I, so one day, and I was Just in case you thought I'm a perfect guy, I'm not. I'm telling you where I come from. Topa di stompi. And you know, I just realized afterwards, kuri kuri nerelata maluetse abatu bakau. Baba ngari tulu rukebo mang rata di stompi. Rata di stompi stompi. Beridi beridi beridi. It's already the 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 the, the tobacco the the tobacco. Rata zolo. One one day kale bala zolo mo rukumba kavaskor. My mother used to do washing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. God cross all of that daily bits. Hey, I can talk about school. Kutwara Mosa, what's up? First response, ha, ah, ma'am. Kya lata exhibit. Ar hausa tsubi king. Because one of those days there was used to be corporal punishment. They used to lay hands on you. Not this way, that way. I tell you. It was the five-fold ministry. I tell you. I thank God for my mother. Because I have a friend, he's hooked on, on cigarettes as I speak. His lungs are all messed up. I stopped, 15 years old. Didn't continue. Because you see, the decisions you make determine the future you have. Oh yeah. Yeah. And sometimes bawo fa ganyane ba re no zama. O no ka ka panik. Ba go fa nyao pe o eng ba re zama. How many lives we cancel people who are totally wrecked by one foolish decision. God's word is a lamp to our feet. Kyalut kyalut la tola ke ta I'll wrap up just now. Number what? Number 4. God's word is seed that is incorruptible. I want to explain that to you. You quoted that, uh, Mama, you quoted that, Aonobua, God's word being incorruptible. Amen. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, we are saved by the incorruptible word of God. Incorruptible means adeboli. Those of you who have ever done uh, uh, gardening or farming, you know that the, the peo yabola, yes, seeds rot. If you, if you have a seed in the ground, if it doesn't take up, it rots, right? However, God's word doesn't rot, meaning this. Once God's word has entered your heart, it will stay there. Wire, wire. 
It's not going to rot. And what happens is it waits for the right environment to start growing. Well, watch this, Bazan. There's many, like I said earlier, there's many verses that I've read in the past. I just never understood them. But at the right time, they began to grow and produce seed in your life. So put in God's word in your heart as much as you can. Don't scare that sabah. There are certain things, little someone that would write certain things won't make sense to you. Mara, because it's God's word, it will stay there. It's incorruptible seed. This means this as well. If you are praying for family members to know Christ, and you bring them to church and they don't respond like you thought, God's word has entered their heart. Once it enters their heart, stays there forever. God's word is seed that doesn't rot. So, but it also means God's word will be able to stand against anything that comes. God's word is powerful. God's word lasts. God's word sustains. God's word, and if you if you build your life on that word, it will sustain you. You know, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, uh, one verse three. It's one of my one of my most favorite verses. You know, when you read from verse 1, it talks about so, so many things. But then it goes and says, God who at sundry times spoke to our fathers through the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son, Jesus Christ. And he said, who is the brightness of his glory and, and the express person of his image? Then it says, upholding all things. Listen to what it says, by the word of his power. Mamela, it, it doesn't say he's upholding all things by the power of his word. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If he said upholding all things by the power of his word, that would mean the word of God has power. But it says upholding all things by the word of his power. Meaning that the word is power. It doesn't have power, it is power. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. Mamela Ambassador, let me, let me break it down for you. The word uphold, that word upheld means to support. It means to sustain. It means to keep from falling. That's what it means. God upholds all things. How many things? How many things? How many things? All things by what? The word of his power. Now let me explain it to you. So which means, we know that this pulpit, those of you who are scientists, you know it's made out of particles. Okay? It's made out of, and I'll, I'll oversimplify it. Made out of particles that are bonded together. Whether they use glue, whatever, they're bonded together. But this pulpit is held together. It's upheld. It's not falling apart. It's not disintegrating. It's upheld. All right? But for this pulpit to be upheld as it is, is because there's an invisible force that holds it together. You don't see it. You don't experience it. But that it's held together is because there's a force that's holding it together. The verse says, God upholds all things. Now we know, we have nine planets. We have millions of stars in the galaxies. Many, many more planets that are out there. And the, and the solar system is such that with all these planets, right? They keep revolving, going around, doing all kinds of things, and they never have an accident. Yeah. Only now and then when you have an asteroid, a piece that falls off that planet, that heads towards our planet, but God has created our planet such that he surrounds it with oxygen to protect us from any foreign objects that come from outer space. And if any of those asteroids enters our solar system, it gets burned by the oxygen that's there. We know that uh, Runa is the Earth right we're going around the sun yeah. and the moon is going around us and all of this has been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and there has not been any accident mm -hmm. and when you look at the planet our planet has order there's summer there's winter there's autumn there's spring it always comes at the right time mm -hmm. and you look at nature nature springs into action at the right time mm -hmm. you come into springtime you see the the trees starting to bud and the flowers starting to bud you see the animals beginning to come to life and everything is in order and nothing is out of order every day the sun comes up and the sun sets it is never late it's always on time it is always there and all of that is happening in perfect order because at the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and how did he create the heavens and the earth he's used his words he spoke his words he said let there be light let there be this let there be this. And the word that God spoke became the sustaining power that holds everything in perfect harmony, in perfect order. Such that millions of 
of years later what God said millions of years ago is still in that order and the same way when you allow God's word in your life the word of God will uphold you when everybody is falling off and God's word will uphold you he'll keep you from falling many people's lives are falling apart because they're using their own efforts and their own means they don't know that God's word can uphold your life. It can hold your life together. It can keep you from falling. Even when other people are falling, you will not fall in the name of Jesus. Because the word of God holds you together. The word of God holds us together. You want your family to be held together? Get on the word. You want your church to be held together? Get on the word. You want your career to be held together? Get on the word. You want your life to be held together? Get on the word. Yeah. You want your health to be held together? Get on the word. Yeah. Get on the word. Because God upholds all things. All things. All things. All things. All things. All things. By the word of his power. Again, Barcelona, I've seen people come to a church who are struggling, who are very poor, whose situations were desperate. No gimmick, no strange anything. Just the word when they took that word. And applied it in their lives. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm about to close now. Number what? Five. Number five. The word of God is an offensive weapon that we can use against Satan. It's an offensive weapon. Now when you read Ephesians chapter 6 of all the, the pieces of armor that the Bible describes for the Christian soldier. The helmet, the breastplate, the feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the belt of truth, you know, the breastplate of righteousness. All those pieces of armor are protective pieces of armor. All of them are meant for protection. The only piece that can inflict pain is the soul. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, every statement he made started with the words, it is written. And when you read it further, it said, and Satan left him for a season. Why? You young people, there be because. <laughs> because <laughs> Satan couldn't take the offensive weapon. Mama now. Ephesians 6 says, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word W-O-R-D. There are two words for that word W-O-R-D. The word L-A-G-O-S. L-O-G-O-S, Logos, which means the written word. And the word R-H-E-M-A, which means the spoken word. Yeah. So the Rema word is the one that is an offensive weapon. When, you, when Satan comes against you and you speak what the word of God concerning you back to him, it's like you are taking the sword of the spirit and you are launching it into him. And that's why after Morana Jesu, I say it is written and it is written, he just backed off. Yeah. Yeah. Just backed off. Here's the principle. When situations of life come against you, instead of talking about them, talk to them. Tell them what the word of God Hallelujah. says about you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell them. Hallelujah. Tell them. I can do all things through Christ yes. who strengthens me. 
Tell them, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell them, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Tell them, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let, let me close cut this testimony because I don't know why I'm going into these stories, but I'm trying to encourage somebody. I went, to, I went to do two Bible schools in my studies because when God called me, when I was doing my grade 12, which we call standard 10, final metric, I then decided to go straight to Bible college from high school, which I did. The second Bible school I went to is Rema, just down the road here. And it's before Rema was here. They used to be in Randberg. Those of you who know the magistrate courts along John Smith Avenue in Randberg, Rema used to be there those years. Coming from Soweto, I had to travel to, to Rema. In those days, the taxis were not like what they are today. There were no taxis to here. And so the, the only way to get here was to use a bus and a train when trains were working. So I used to board the train go in Tanzania station and I would disembark go uh, Bramfontein station and go over and catch a bus and come to Rama. It used to be a journey of about an hour and a half just to get work, okay? So I got a job, Morema, working in the mailing room. And I was already doing my first year in Bible school. Okay. So my dad had paid for my tuition when I was in the first Bible school. And, and I didn't want him to pay this time. I, I just said, look, no. So I said, look, I'm going to pay for myself. But what I earned was really not a lot of money. So I had to pay my, pay my schooling fees. I had to ensure I had to ensure I buy myself clothes and I wanted to be married. So you know, I was single then. But I tell you, my, my money didn't stretch. My money didn't stretch. And worst of all, the job I was doing at that time was the lowest job. And it is not like it is now, but back then, Makowa then were very racist. Most of them would never greet me. They didn't know my name. And they'd call me out. So I was the lowest of the lowest, the scum of all. And because I attended school in the evening, I'd come to work, and I'd be at work at seven or half past seven in the morning. And then we started work at half past eight, and. I asked my boss to work my lunch hour in instead of dismissing at 5 o'clock. I said, can I dismiss at 4 o'clock so that between 4 and 5 I get fresh air because 5 o'clock, half past 5, Bible school starts. And not only that, in my job, I couldn't work at so I had to work up overall. It was a hard job, very physically involving. You sweat, everything. So I just said, well, I can boss, okay, but like in between, I can get a little I can get and then go to work. <laughs> Listen to me. Sure. And then it hit me. Hey, here I am. I say God has called me. I don't even know where I'm going to start a church. I, I don't have connections. What's going to happen? And I keep my mom saying, these white people, they call me names. They say all kinds of things. What am I going to do? Listen to me. Instead of feeling sorry for myself, yeah. I said, now that I arrive here at work early, I'm going to use that time to take God's word and speak over my life Hallelujah. what the word of God says about me. I'm going to speak about my health. I'm going to speak about my career path. I'm going to speak about my resources. I'm going to speak about my mind, my thinking. And every morning, I would walk the floor reading the verses. Reading the verses. Reading the verse. Because things were so bad for me. But I didn't even have chela at your lunch. I didn't. When other people were talking about hamburger, we didn't recite it to be those days. We didn't know what that was. I, I, I bought cheese and peanut butter. That's what I had at home. And I'd buy brown bread 
and I'll smear peanut butter, take a slice of cheese, and, and milk. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I had when I was at Bible school. Now that's what I had. Didn't have clothes, and I remember one of the pastors there who was from overseas, gave me clothes to go and give to the people in Soweto, poor people. I can share my car. Hey! So I, I was honest. I went to him. I said, Look, I am going to take them to the poor people, Mara. Can I have the first? He said, No, by all means. I, I, I call them. And I remember I used to have a double breast jacket. And I didn't know. You know, and it, 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 they were trending those days. And I had this beautiful double jacket and a pair of jeans. I wore them every day. Every day, every day to work, every day. Wow. And sometimes I used to be surprised, or mad. Why watch this so? <laughs> <laughs> you people, you are laughing at me instead of being compassionate. Until like a sheba kamukhari, hundred percent wool. But with that jacket and those pair of jeans, I took God's word every day. I spoke God's word over my life. People were laughing, scoffing, mocking. But remember, it's incorruptible seed. When you plant it, it may not grow today. It may not grow tomorrow. Mara, one day is one day. Some of you, you see us preaching today, you see where we are, you think this is where we started. You think we don't understand your problems. You think we don't understand your struggles. And I'm here to tell you, it wasn't magic. It wasn't oil. It wasn't grass. It wasn't a snake. It was the word of God. The word of God that lives and abides forever. The word of God that you can hide in your heart. You can live by that word. And that word will uphold you. And that word will sustain you. I pray that the grace of God will rest upon your lives. I pray that the revelation of God's word will be your portion. Father, we want to thank you today. Will you all just pray for a while? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray everybody. Say the mama mangri sekara baba bale de se ator se de ba. Mama mane mbre sekara de bra bale de ria na mo sekuri ya baba. Ah baba ria ne ngri se griste o streba na mo. Mama hale de mbra bari ada. Mango ria le de se keria na mro de gorde. Grenga no mbre asta. Griban mane ali de ste. Gripon na mbang banga. Bagri de de. Egri de se kir de ba. Mama hale de ya na. Oh, ya bebe bebe, ya bebe bebe. Grim mandum braba de bedi and dum brago da bre desi ter de. Amari and dum be zungre zogoro jigre sese. Oh, kabog zia zese. Zema dem bre dem jen dem braga da bre dar de. Mama mama lia da bre dem bun dam bun dam braga la dar ya dam. Raba la ba dum gre sogoro de ya ba. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Sekar de brada da manambra de sekar de anunoj. Mama mama mumbra ngandum bra kadara bandi adano. Bra mandum bra mada mandengri sekar de. Mamari andum greka damri nendum bra kadadai. Oh kabro kadam rendam greka leba degre. Bra mandum bambo kar degre da sekar. Oh we bless your name. We bless your name. Shall we all stand on our feet, please, everybody? Shall we all stand on our feet right now as I'm going to close in a word of prayer? Just stand on your feet and just raise your hands to the Lord and just say it with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit myself to live by your word, to read it, to study it, to practice it. And to be your doer of it. Doer of it. I, thank you I thank you. For the integrity of your word. Of your and I give you praise. Give you praise. In, Jesus In Jesus name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> now. Before you sit down. And before I hand over to Muruti. I want to quickly go through some few things with you. Ne? How do you do this? Here's what you do. You're going to need a Bible. 
in the morning and if you're going to have a quiet time in the word of God you'll need a notebook you'll also need a, an appropriate time that is consistent if you don't make time you'll never have time Amen. personally I, I prefer early in the morning before people wake up that you go into that private space and how do you do it? Well, when you get into your prayer time and your Bible reading time, start with praying. Yeah. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If not, pray in a language. And then secondly, read the Bible. Now, you can read it in chapters. I prefer that you read one chapter after another. Just read, just read. And then after that, think about what you've read. Think about what you've read. Right? Now, there are certain guidelines, Bible extra biblical material that you can find on the internet that explains certain words and so on. And then, next thing is, whatever lessons you learn, write them down. Amen. Journal. I write down. I've got things I've written down. And then, at the end of those lessons, try to remember at least one verse. And the whole day, be thinking on it and be speaking it over your life. I'm giving you practical things. This is not, not theory. Amen. Speaking it over your life. Amen. And of course, at the end of that session, pray. And the last thing, try to be a doer of what you've learned. Amen. If you do this, Pastor I'm telling you the truth. Five years, ten years from now. And you'll not be the same person. Some of you, maybe right now, you are in the midst of all kinds of things and you don't even know how you're going to get out of it. You don't have to know. God will uphold you by the word of His God. Just take His word and use it in your life. My prayer for you is that you love God's word. You study God's word. You read God's word. You will be a doer of God's word. May the grace of the Lord rest upon all of you as a ministry. Mama. May God guide you and lead you and to all of you as members with your hearts that are open for the word of God. May God increase his anointing upon your life. May some of you who may be in that same situation, may I tell you that season will never be forever. Amen. You will come out of it one day. And finally, the same God who's upholding all things by the word of his power. May it be the same God who will uphold your life and keep you from falling in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, man of God. Thank you so much, Mama. We bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much.